Welcome to the Gobi March Mongolia by Racing the Planet, the spectacular multi-stage ultra-distance series which takes place in some of the most spectacular locations on the planet. Namibia, the Atacama Desert in Chile, Antarctica, the Gobi Desert in Mongolia and New Zealand are just some of the places that the Racing the Planet series visits. At each event, there's an average of 250 kilometers of running over six consecutive days. It's a serious challenge for even the hardiest of Gobi March Mongolia by racing the planet warriors. Mongolia, the former Soviet state, is one of the most undiscovered countries in the world. Sandwiched between China to the south and Russia to the north, it is dominated by sparsely populated grasslands and semi-desert. Population live in the capital, while around 40% of the country's workforce is nomadic, herding livestock in the extensive pasturelands. The scenery is just magic. The Gobi Desert stretches across huge portions of both Mongolia and China. It covers parts of northern and northwestern China and, of course, southern Mongolia. The desert basins of the Gobi are bounded by the Atai Mountains and the grasslands of Mongolia in the north and by the North China Plain to the southeast. first uh, four deserts race and it's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time in uh, 2008 10 years ago I saw it on, a, on an interview on Australian TV and I thought to myself this is definitely something I have to do for my life to feel really fulfilled I, I really want to finish all four of the desert races and uh, experience just the amazing world that we live in um, and I feel really pr privileged to be able to be healthy enough and uh, I'm from a country that's so lovely that allows me to do this and be able to work and be happy. The Gobi March race takes place in the Karakoram region in central Mongolia. The 250 kilometre course takes the athletes through vast green grasslands, stupas and temples, sand dunes, great rocky valleys and old forests. Competitors sleep in traditional Mongolian yurts during the race. The fourth and toughest stage of the Gobi March is the Long March and takes the athletes through the wide Mongolian steppes and the UNESCO World Heritage Centre of the Orkhorn Valley cultural landscape and then to the ancient city of Karakorum, the former capital of Genghis Khan's empire. the long march um, through to the Orkhon Valley. Uh, it was a very beautiful, large, vast, green landscape with the local, with the recent rains. Um, we got to see a lot of the 
local nomadic herders um, with their big cows um, and also obviously we got to stay in some nice yurts the night before um, and the campsite was set up right in the middle of the valley so we could obviously see the vast landscape um, to the surrounding mountains as well. It's a brutal race where tactics and race strategy are key. Approximately 20% of the competitors run the entire course, while 60% combine running and walking, with the remaining 20% walking the entire route. The fastest completion time is around 24 hours, with the slowest around 70 hours. As a self-supported race, the competitors must carry all mandatory items for seven days on their backs, including food. The average backpack weighs nine kilograms or 20 pounds. Only water is provided by the organiser, and that in itself is a mammoth task with the competitors, volunteers and staff expected to consume up to 15,000 litres of water during the event. <laughs> Crossing the desert carrying all mandatory items means that the competitors have to be super organised. They'll plan each day and carry the precise amount of food required that'll give their bodies the much needed nutrients and replace the huge number of calories that they burn each day. Sabina Baccinelli is an elite runner from Italy and she gives us an insight into how she prepares the food that she'll take with her on the run. My favorite nutrition before food before the race was especially vegetable and fruit because I'm a vegetarian and my favorite Italian food is pizza and beer at the, at the evening. Here I eat noodle, noodle soup with vegetables and dried fruit during the race. I don't like to energy bar or gel. After a race, I hope to eat a lot of salad, fruit and vegetable, fresh fruit. The Gobi March attracts athletes from all over the world and people with different incentives and goals. One of them, Amy Pendleton Knoll from Washington DC in the United States, was a Peace Corps volunteer in Malawi, Africa. She loves to explore the unmapped corners of the world and now runs until it hurts to push her personal limits. The Gobi March is Amy's first Racing the Planet event. Traveling is a way for me to shake things up and experience new things, meet new people, see new places, um, and really just escape from your normal for a little while and see absolutely incredible places like this. Um, that you really only see in postcards or in movies. Um, so it's really neat to not only visit places, but really dive in and experience them in, in cool ways, um, like running. Thank you. Thank you so much. The climate in Mongolia varies greatly across the country. Temperatures can be as high as 50 degrees Celsius in the summer in the grasslands and desert areas, whilst it's been known for the temperatures to drop to minus 40 degrees Celsius in the winter in the mountains. Mm. 
With the Gobi March taking place during the summer, the temperatures will range between 15 and 35 degrees Celsius, but they can go down as low as zero degrees Celsius at night. The race starts at approximately 1,000 metres and climbs up to an elevation of around 1,500 metres for most of the race. People of all ages have come to take part in the race. Looking to complete the gruelling event is Jackie Bell. I began running through school, so I did cross country. I ran all through high school, but my first ultra marathon was, yeah, 19, so that was about four years ago, and I came third in that one, and then I caught the running bug from there. For my free time, I usually am doing something related to fitness. I work in the fitness industry as well, so um, I love getting outdoors and hiking. Otherwise, I really enjoy going to brunch and having coffee. I love avocado on a good sourdough bread. I'd say Samantha Gash is definitely one of my idols. She was um, the first female to complete all four of the deserts in 2010, and she's been a great guidance along the way. Also, Jax has been really awesome, um, but even just down to a ground level of Sandy Suckling, I ran in Namibia with her, and. Karen, another Aussie here, she's been great to run with. I think just take it easy, don't go out a bullet a gate, um, leave your ego at home and don't be too competitive. It's a real tactical sport in the sense of you've got to last seven days rather than just one or two days. Among the participants for this year's event is a retired US Army Sergeant Major who's come well prepared and trained for the event. The Afghanistan veteran was no stranger to desert conditions, but this was his first Racing the Planet race. My military background, as far as training, it's, 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 uh, it's easier, but the actual training is, of course, not easy, but as far as organization, planning, because you, you need planning, you know, and execution and so on. So, yeah, at the end of the day, my background helps uh, with overall planning, training, and, and actually doing the race. The total distance of the Gobi March is 250 kilometres or 155 miles, staged over six days. It's tough with the weather conditions also throwing up an element of unpredictability with rain and then blistering heat. It's been an incredible experience. Um, seen a lot of amazing sights. Mongolia as a country is so different to any other country I visited. You know, just the sweeping plains, the greenery. I didn't expect it to be uh, like it was. I expected more desert-like conditions, I suppose.
held in 2003, the annual Gobi March celebrated its 15th edition by heading to Mongolia. The six-stage race began on the 29th of July and more than 200 competitors from 50 countries followed the footsteps of Genghis Khan in the beautiful Mongolian wilderness. The final, stage six, saw competitors finish the race in Karakorum, the 13th and 14th century capital of Genghis Khan's empire. Hong Kong ultra runner Wong Ho Chung took overall victory in the Gobi March, crossing the finish line in 20 hours and 34 minutes. The 31 year old took pole position from stage four after the controversial withdrawal of the Spanish athlete who was leading at the time. I like this race so much. Actually, I think it is a very wonderful course. Uh, I think the most difficult part in this race is the weather because I used it to run in hot weather and I stay in Hong Kong which is very hot in summertime now and but in the Mongolia in the daytime it's quite hot I'm okay but for the light time it's so cold so when I, I every night when I'm sleeping I need to use the emergency blanket <laughs> Francisco-based German runner Angela Zeich was the fastest female finishing in a time of 25 hours and 10 minutes. The time was good enough to see her also take fifth overall against the men. Second in the ladies' competition was Canada's Isabel Souve, with Japan's Chizura Inui finishing third. This year, a third of the field were women, a particularly high turnout for this sport. It was a, an amazing week. We had a lot of fun. And I think what was difficult was especially that the course was just very fast. Everything was quite runnable and the weather was nice and cool. So the pace was really fast the entire week, um, which was fun, but also exhausting. But it was beautiful, it was really fun. We met so many people from all over the world and the volunteers were amazing at every checkpoint and at the finish line welcoming us. So it was, it was great, it was an amazing week. During this unique event, the participants have the opportunity to experience traditional Mongolian life with the Nadam festival. The 
three sports of Mongolian wrestling, horse racing and archery are held throughout the country in what is considered an expression of nomadic culture and a celebration of a nation. The origins of the festival are directly linked to the history of the Mongolian military practice during the time of Genghis Khan, whose selection of his key soldiers was based on a series of physical tests. <laughs> Before and after major battles, the three sports of wrestling, horse racing and archery were exercised as an organised event which later adopted its present name, Nadan. I thought the wrestling was very good, interesting, I mean I quite like how it's reminded me a little bit of sumo wrestling, um, very traditional, uh, yeah it's excellent to see and the, the, the background and the scenery is, is beautiful so it's been good, it's been good fun. <laughs> really enjoyed the event that they put on for us today, um, especially the, the dancing and the singing. The girl dancing was brilliant. I thought she was fantastic, very unusual, very different from our culture, I guess. Um, and then the, the, the guy playing um, and the singing was really good. Gobi March Mongolia by Racing the Planet is not only a tough multi-stage race, it's a community for like-minded people and is a wonderful way to make new friends and experience an unforgettable week in the desert. To set up a camp for one of our races takes quite a lot of work and we are moving uh, 350 people from one place to another and uh, in order to put it all together it takes a lot of hands on deck so for this particular race we have um, 27 camp workers um, along with our normal international staff and volunteers that help to set it up and we are setting up almost 50 tents every day we're taking them down putting them back up again and we're also setting up 10 toilets as well so it's a lot of um, a lot of work and a lot of moving parts, but when you have a great team that works together, it, it comes together and, and it's, it's really amazing when you come to these beautiful locations and there's absolutely nothing around and in a matter of an hour we've set up a small village where runners can come and they're so excited to come to their home for the evening. Another spectacular Racing the Planet event came to an end. There were highs and lows with some unbelievable stories and experiences gained along the way. Few post-race celebrations whilst all will now look forward to meeting again for next year's event in July 2019.